a very common topic that people struggle with, whether they're in high school, uh, grammar school, or college, is trig. So I just want to give you like a quick two, three minute tutorial on how to memorize trig and never, ever, ever have to worry about any trig function ever again. Um, so basically, on any test you might take or any homework you might have where they ask you to compute trig without a calculator, they're going to give you basically one of these five angles here. 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 2, and maybe there'll be a different number in front of the pi, so maybe like 7 pi over 6, or 3 pi over 4, or 5 pi over 3. Um, but basically, these are going to be, um, the denominators will be 6, 4, 3, 2, or uh, the angle will be 0. So here's a quick way to memorize it. The sine of 0, I'm going to write that as root 0 divided by 2. The sine of pi over 6, I'm going to write that as root 1 over 2. Maybe you already see the pattern. The sine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2. The sine of pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. And the sine of pi over 2 is going to be root 4 over 2. Obviously, some of these things can be simplified. Root 0 over 2, that's just 0. Root 1 over 2, that's just 1 half. And root 4 over 2, that's just 1. So all you need to do on any test that you take, if you have to know your trigonometry, um, is just memorize sine and these five angles here. Because you know what? Cosine is just the reverse. The cosine of 0 is going to be root 4 over 2. The cosine of pi over 6, root 3 over 2, pi over 4, root 2 over 2, pi over 3, root 1 over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is going to be root 0 over 2. And again, obviously that's 1. This over here is 1 half. And this over here is 0. So that's a good way to memorize trig, right? Not too difficult, nothing too tricky, pretty straightforward. And obviously you can derive any trig function as long as you know the sine and cosine values. For example, tangent of x is going to be equal to, I know my left hand is annoying, sine of x over cosine of x. And cosecant of x is equal to 1 over sine of x. So from these angles up here, you can figure out tangent, cosecant, secant. Uh, you can figure out any trick functions and cotangent as well. Um, so all you need to do is know sine and cosine. That's it. And then you know all the trig you ever need to know, ever. But now there's a problem. You know, what if they were to ask you the sine of 5 pi over 6 or the sine of something stupid like 11 pi over 4? Well, how do you figure that out? The one thing to know is that the absolute value of those angles will, is going to be these numbers here. So root 3, the sine of like 11 pi over 3, it's going to be the absolute value will be root 3 over 2, but you don't know if it's positive or negative. But the absolute value will be root 3 over 2. So how do you figure out, you know, if it's positive or negative? Well, of course, there's a trick for that, too. So down here in my little quadrant, I don't have a fancy whiteboard yet, but I do have this paper. Um, we have the four quadrants. Move my camera back a little bit. There we go. And say they were to ask you the sine of, let's say, sine of... 5 pi divided by 6. How do you figure out 5 pi over 6? Well, here's what you do. You know that all of these angles up here, well, except for those two, these three middle angles here lie within the first quadrant. These two border the first quadrant. And obviously, this is quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we know that in quadrant 1, all trig functions are positive. In quadrant 2, only sine and obviously cosecant are positive. In quadrant 3, tangent and cotangent are positive. And in quadrant 4, cosine and secant are positive. Um, so if they ask you sine of 5 pi over 6, how do you calculate that? Here's what you do. You know that pi over 6 lies within the first quadrant. Okay, it's going to be a 30 degree angle. Um, so it's going to be, you know, somewhere down here. Right above that line right there. Keep adding 1 pi to the numerator of pi over 6 until you can't simplify it anymore. So, for example, add 1 pi to pi over 6, or add 1 pi to the numerator. That's going to give you 2 pi over 6. Can 2 pi over 6 be simplified? Well, yeah, that can be simplified into pi over 3. So, 
move on. Add another pi, 3 pi over 6. Can that be simplified? Yeah, 3 pi over 6 is pi over 2. Add another pi, you get 4 pi over 6. Well, that could be simplified at 2 pi over 3. Add another pi, you get 5 pi over 6. Can you simplify pi over, 5 pi over 6? Well, no, you can't. 5 pi over 6 is 5 pi over 6. You can't um, cancel any numbers there. So that first one that you get, that where it won't cancel, lies in the next quadrant, um, right next to the angle that you started with. So here's pi over 6. Then we, simpli we couldn't simplify 5 pi over 6, so that's the next quadrant. Now let's start at 5 pi over 6. Keep adding 1. 6 pi over 6, that's no good, that's just pi. Add one more, we get 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 is down here in the third quadrant because we started with 5 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 was the next one that we couldn't simplify, so it lies down here. And obviously we know that the absolute value of these angles here, sine of pi 5 pi over 6, we know the absolute value is 1 half, and we know in quadrant 2, sine is positive, so it's positive 1 half. And then down here, we have sine of 7 pi over 6. Well, we know the absolute value is 1 half, and we just need to know if it's positive or negative. And we know that sine in this third quadrant here is always negative. Okay, so that's it. And then, now I'll give you a second, figure out what angle would be here in the fourth quadrant. Start with 7 pi over 6 and keep adding 1 pi to the numerator until you can't simplify it anymore. If you came up with 11 pi over 6, then you are correct. So 11 pi over 6 would be in this quadrant, because 8, 9, and 10 pi over 6 can all be simplified. Um, so 8 sine of 11 pi over 6, that's going to be absolute value, 1 half, and will it be positive or negative? It will be negative, because um, only cotangent and secant are positive in quadrant 4. So this is all the trig you ever need to know, ever. But shouldn't say that, because you never know what crazy te test question they might throw you on an exam. Um, this is all the trig I've ever known, and it has gotten me through a lot of math courses in college. Um, so I hope this helped. If you have any questions, um, post a comment, and I will be happy to respond. But I th think a lot of people find this helpful, and I hope you do too. Bye!